Chapter 12, Zombie Virus Countdown. Sam snatched the computer from Prodi's hands and pushed him to the floor. You know, it's so unfair that no matter how much we outsmart our evil big brothers, they are still two feet taller and usually able to squash us if they want to. I watched Prodi getting squashed and knew my own squashing was just a matter of time. 45 seconds left and still five numbers to enter on my password code, Sanj gloated. There's no way to stop me now. I'll have a whole world of zombie fish slaves. You win, I lose, na 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 na. And you so lose, Mark said, as he caught up with me and grabbed me around my arms so I couldn't move. I looked Mark right in the eye, and that's when I released my secret weapon. I opened my mouth, and Frankie jumped out, slapping his tail hard across Mark's face until he fell backward onto the mosquito net I'd been trapped under earlier. I quickly rolled the net around him as Frankie fell to the floor and skidded along its watery surface, skating towards Sanj. Look out, Frankie! Pradeep yelled as Sanj stomped his feet, trying to squash Frankie. But Frankie bounced off the top of Sanj's boot, leapt over his head, and landed on the laptop. Ten seconds, read the clock. Frankie flipped around on the keyboard, thwacking keys with his tail and dodging Sanja's fist. The clock ticked on. Seven. Six. Five. Thwack! 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 On the keys. Four. Three. Two. Tap! 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 One. And then it froze. Sanj stared at the screen. Impossible, he said. How could a fish type in code? Sanj collapsed on the floor, talking to himself. Yeah, you'd have to be a stupid little moron to be outwitted by a couple of little kids and a fish, I said. Right, Frankie? That's when I saw the goldfish. Fishy, not swishy? Sammy struggled in the trash can, pointing to Frankie lying motionless on the laptop keyboard. No, Frankie, you can't, I said. Quick, we need to get him some water. Pradeep ran to get the jug off the floor and filled it from the tap. I gently placed Frankie in the water as Pradeep pulled Sammy out of the trash can. She hugged him around the knees. Sanj was still mumbling to himself on the floor. How could he do that? How could the fish figure it out? Sammy toddled over to Sanj and dumped the trash can on his head. Naughty, Sanj, she said. The lunch ladies who Frankie had hypnotized burst into the science lab with Gladys right behind. I don't know what they're doing, she said. Betty just put some eggs on a plate and Carol grabbed a moldy bread roll and they headed up here. We've stunned all the teachers and students now anyhow. Although nobody can reach Mr. Walker. Ethel and Mildred have him cornered behind the salad bar. I think Frankie must have summoned them somehow, I interrupted, and sent them a message with what he needs. Look. Oh, he doesn't look good, does he? Poor fish. Looks famished. No wonder he wanted eggs and bread. But why the moldy ones? They're green, Pradeep and I said at the same time. I realized I talk at the same time as a lot of people. Gotta work on that. I checked no one else was about to speak before I added, he only likes green food. I took the eggs and moldy rolls and crumbled them into the jug. Frankie shook slightly, then opened his mouth and closed. He started gobbling up egg bits and moldy bread. He looked up at me from his jug, winked, and swished his tail. Good to have you back, Frankie, I said, patting him gently on his top fin. We just need your help with one more thing, I added, before Pradeep and I whispered the next stage of our plan. Chapter 13. Fantastic Finale. We tied Sanj in the mosquito netting, too, and let Frankie zombify him and Mark so they wouldn't try to escape. Then we went down to the basement, and Frankie re-zombified the bedlam-stunned zombies so that they were all under his control. He made them all go to the assembly hall, including the lunch ladies and Mrs. Kumar. Pradip and I wrote a message on a whiteboard that said, Welcome to Lunch Lady Appreciation Assembly. Frankie released everyone from his control, and they all blinked to life. The zombie stares had vanished. It's like they've been rebooted, Pradeep said. On cue, Pradeep and Sammy and I started singing, For they are jolly good ladies, for they are jolly good ladies, for they are jolly good ladies, which nobody can deny. And everybody just kind of joined in. The lunch ladies looked surprised and some of them even blushed. Gladys smiled bigger than ever. 
Mrs. Prentice looked confused to find herself standing at the microphone at the front of the assembly hall. She read the whiteboard and looked over at the beaming faces of the lunch ladies and said, Yes, um, of course, the school couldn't function without the dedication of our much-valued catering staff. Three cheers for the lunch ladies, I shouted. The whole hall replied, Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! When the assembly was over, we told Mrs. Prentice that we had found the purple traitors, even though neither of them was wearing purple, of the false fire alarm and computer prank, and that they were in the science lab. Pradeep and I ran ahead, and Pradeep wiped the virus off Sanj's laptop just in time. Mark and Sanj were still tied up when Mrs. Prentice and Mrs. Kumar walked in. Stupid moron letting a fish crack your code, Mark shouted. No, you are the stupid moron for not catching the fish in the first place, Sanj shouted back. You are so not evil enough to be in my gang, Mark said. And you are far too intellectually inferior to be in my gang, Sanj replied. Mark's face looked like his brain was trying to figure out what Sanj just said. Then he gave up and thumped Sanj instead. Whatever, he grunted. Mrs. Prentice leaned over Sanj and Mark. I've spoken to the principal at the middle school, so you can add truancy to your list of other misdemeanors like tampering with the fire alarm and hacking the school computer. Basically, Mrs. Prentice was telling them that they were busted. I think you boys have a lot of explaining to do, she said. She led the boys toward her office with Pradeep's mom tutting at Sanj. Then Mrs. Kumar stopped and turned around. Samina, she called. Sammy skipped out of the science lab, carrying Pradeep's lunchbox. Oh, thank you, Samina. Here's your lunch, Pradeep. She paused for a second. Oh, I nearly forgot the way you like it. She gave the lunchbox a shake before handing it to Pradeep. Pradeep gave me a look that said, I bet you know why you did that, but I won't ask you now. And I knew exactly what his look meant. Sammy waved as she trotted off after her mom. Bye, swishy, sakey, fishy, she giggled. Pradeep opened the lunchbox, and there was Frankie in the plastic bag that I'd put him in after the lunch lady assembly. The goldfish's eyeballs were spinning around in their bulging sockets. Poor Frankie, I said. I think he's going to want to come to school with me again. Hey, Frankie, let's go and see the lunch ladies, Pradeep said. Yeah, I bet they could find you something green to eat. I added, Frankie swished his tail, and it even looked like he gave us a fins-up sign with his left fin. In the cafeteria, Gladys said that she would keep our secret about Frankie. He's the cutest little zombie fish, really, she said. I think Frankie blushed, but it was hard to tell through his fish scales. Besides, it's the most exciting day at work I've ever had, she carried on. And don't worry, next time you're in the food line, I'll give you an extra egg. She nudged my arm with her spatula and smiled. My stomach lurched at the thought, but Frankie thrashed around in excitement. I guess I could always take it home as a treat for him. Because from now on, Frankie's safer staying at home. I never realized how dangerous school can be. Luckily, we've got a big, fat zombie goldfish to help out when things get rough. I wonder how good he is at times tables.